As I'm sure a lot of you know, Thomas the Tank Engine has been my most passionate franchise ever over these many years of me loving it. But why though exactly? Well, for one good reason. It's the one thing that has stuck with me ever since childhood. Like, it was the main show that I always watched during my childhood. I had other shows that I had watched during my childhood, but Thomas was always the one I would go to so often, even when it hit the terrible nitrogen era. And this very show means so much to me and many others across the world, for one good reason, its world building and realistic set designs. Now, I'm one of those few people who doesn't really care for Rela realism, for one good reason. But I just can't get enough of how amazing these realistic sets are, especially in my two favorite seasons, season 3 and season 5. Man, those seasons are so good. You also have the many movies that have come out of the series since 2000. In fact, there's been 14 of them in total, lasting from the first theatrical film, Thomas and the Magic Railroad, in 2000, to its last directed DVD film slash special, Big World of Big Adventures in 2018. And of course, you have to give credit to all those narrators throughout the years, both UK and US. Ringo Starr, Michael Angelis, George Carlin, Pierce Brosnan, and even Mark Morahan. Of course, you got the model series, which is the one a lot of people remember growing up with, including myself, and I could easily see why. This era lasted for nearly 30 years, from season 1 in 1984 to season 12 in 2008. And there's also the 12 year long CGI series. Lasting from the movie Hero of the Rails in 2009 all the way to the end of the show's run with season 24 in 2020. I really love this time period. While it was done dirty at the start, from 2013 until the end, that's when the era got better in terms of writing and animation. And while I get chills when I see a CGI crash, nothing will ever top the crap the model series stuff did. I mean, seeing a physical model set just breaking up hearts or exploding will always be satisfying to watch, especially when it comes down to season 5. But of course, this show, while I still love it to death, is it of course when I would share of mid or bad seasons, particularly seasons 8 through 16. 8 through 12 is a mixed bag, but season 13 through 16 is just straight up bad, even if season 16 is okay in my opinion. But don't even get me started on season 12. I get that it's a transitional season to the CGI series, but still. ToysFan261 did an excellent video explaining why this season is inherently broken. But aside from those duds, I still look back on this show for what it is. It's fantastic narration, mostly from the UK dub, stunning model work, amazing and neat looking animation from the CGI series, it's likeable characters, great music, particularly from Michael Donald and Junior Campbell, and the king of it all, the goated theme song. Seriously, that never gets old. And it never will. And there's also quite a lot of sing-along songs over the years. But my absolute favourite is... Thomas, You're the Leader. It is so phenomenal. Yes, it's a bit overplayed. But I just can't get enough of it. It's that amazing. <laughs> Anyways, on to the next show. Since I talked about my childhood hero enough. The Alha 
Wars was a show that completely had me taken aback. Disney stuff nowadays is just either okay or just not interesting and looks bad. Even if it looks visually stunning. But somehow, this godforsaken show just clicked at me. The animation style here, well, it reminds me of a certain Trudy Reaver to a show that I despise, looks great. The character models are really nice to look at, and the way how they're just really, really fluid makes it all the more great to watch. The way how the characters run, fight, fall down, it's just so humorous to watch. Speaking of which, the characters here are more so than not likeable. Luce is a kind-hearted, outgoing, and exceedingly geeky girl who possesses a strong love of fantasy and adventure. Willow is a bumbly and friendly witch. Gus is sometimes very enthusiastic and excitable. And Avani, well, it's no surprise to anyone. Avani is the best character to come out of the series. Mainly because of her character arc across the whole show. In her debut episode, she's shown as a mean-spirited, selfish witch. After a top student badge is taken off of her, it's given to Willow. And then, over the course of the series, she starts to show her more softer and sensitive side. And in Enchanted Grom Knight, it's shown that she has feelings for loose inside of her. But then, little by little, the two show each other's feelings towards each other and eventually start dating. And then, the moment happens. In the episode, Clouds on the Horizon. And this is when the internet started going nuts. In this scene right here. Amity doesn't want her world to end before her and Luz go on a date. Only for Luz to say what Amity said about her right at the the balcony in her room and then the moment finally happens it's going to be the most mundane slice of life date ever and it'll be awesome i know oh crikey i can't believe i just did that i can't believe i just said that this really had the internet going crazy over it and rightfully so it's the first time we get to see a Disney protagonist in love with someone else that's the same gender. LGBTQ anyone? And then we see Luz get back to the human realm, but with her friends and girlfriend from the Boiling Isles taking with her. And it all comes to a conclusion with the final episode of the entire series, Watching and Dreaming. And there could have been a more action-packed and more heartwarming ending to this surprisingly amazing Disney production. The Owl House is a certified masterpiece. What can I say about Ping Nu that hasn't been said already? Well, it's a fantastic and well produced series. Sure, it's a shame that it only got six seasons, and then again, Owl House got three, so they're both evenly matched. Pingu was another show from my childhood, and is one of the few characters in TV history that has been hard to mess up. Seriously, even when Pingu had his revival in 2017 in Japan, he looked completely identical to his stop motion counterpart. That's an accomplishment even of itself. The thing I love the most about Pingu, other than the stop motion and its charm, is the characters themselves. Quite the Owl House, the characters here are relatable and likeable, especially Pingu. Why is that you may ask? Because they actually had the closest way real life parents and kids act. Pingu in particular makes mistakes, he doesn't like school that much, he wants to be the best, to be likeable, and he can get stroppy or sad when things don't go the way he wanted to. That's okay. A child can be flawed in some way, but he isn't unlikable because of that. He means well, he has great friends, 
He still loves his parents and he wants to do what is best for others. It's a great balance a kid of his ages has in certain cases. But what makes this show unique, specifically the first four seasons, is that similar to the first four seasons of Climb and Sam, they got one guy to provide all the voices for every character. Now that is impressive. And this may be a hot take, but I actually quite like the redone episodes for seasons one and two. While some of the dialogue isn't too graceful. It's still quite charming to listen to. I do quite like the original dubs of the episodes, but I'd say they're on par with the redone ones in my opinion. And now, that brings us on to... Yep, seasons 5 and 6. To say that Hit outdid themselves with these seasons would be an understatement. The voice acting is much more fun to listen to, the animation is better and much more brighter, it's more faster paced than seasons 3 and 4, it is just entertaining to watch. And I actually think that these two seasons are the best two seasons of the show. Yeah, they're that great. As for the Revival series, Bingo in the City, it's enjoyable enough. The pacing is much more slower than seasons 5 and 6 of the original series, but at least the animation is trying to replicate the stop motion series, and it's the only time where Pingu is deviled in the world of CGI. So that's something alright. not be a fan of the CBB shows as a whole, but somehow Teletubbies click with me. Maybe because it's filmed on a real life set like Thomas or something. I don't know. But I really enjoyed this show quite a bit if I'm honest. The set design of Teletubby Land is really, really nice to look at. And I really like the unique and diverse camera angles of the whole set. Accompanied by the lovely looking flowers and the amusing music to go along with it. The characters themselves are just a joy to watch. You have Tinky Winky, the purple Teletubby, Dipsy, the black skin green Teletubby. Okay. Okay, respect on that. Lala, the yellow Teletubby, and my favorite of the characters in the show. Poe, the red Teletubby. Nunu, the vacuum cleaner, the talking flowers. Okay. And new for the 2015 reboot, the Tiddly Tubbies. But I'll only be talking about the original series, not the reboot. In the show, the Teletubbies are encouraged by either the narrator or the cool looking voice droplets to do new things each day. Whether it be finding a spot to put a flag up, do special things, or play with certain objects. Like a seesaw, a swing, a mirror, or even a bed of all things, as shown in Rumble Tumble Fun. There is also the magic windmill. Did someone say magic? I wasn't mentioning you, so go away. Anyway, which is basically an indication from the Teletubbies to go and watch a TV event through their TV screens. What a cool as hell magical event. Whether it be a herd of animals, three ships accompanied by the raised water, little Bo Beep, a singing doll? Okay. And, more infamously, a comedically talking bear and a scary lion. Why is this magic event infamous? Well, it was originally taken in a more scary esque way, with the lion even having a creepy voice actor voicing him. But due to complaints from toddlers about the segment, it was then re edited to a more 
kid friendly way. I mean, it's weird for that to happen, but at least it's not taken in a more frustrating way than how the nitrogen error of Thomas was taken. God, that error sucks. So, I don't have much to say other than Toy Story is great. A nice theme song, great looking sets, charming characters, stellar music, and nice narration by Tim Whitnell. And even the 2015 reboot wasn't half bad. No, I still prefer the original for nostalgic reasons. If you want to watch good CBB shows, well, I'd say watch Tally Dove is a rub. But that's just what I'd recommend. What's this? Three Mattel properties in the same podcast? But seriously though, Bob the Builder is amazing. As I said in my Ready Steady Build review recently, I said it was on par with Teletubbies with how charming and great it is. For starters, the theme song is amazing. The instrumental is great, and the vocals by Neil Morrissey are just straight up vibes for me. Its characters are very likable and relatable. You got Bob and his colleague Wendy, who take care of the machines really well and care about them badly. Scoopy's a caring and hardworking digger. Muck loves getting mucky and does care about the machines here. Okay. Dizzy loves listening to her music but loves doing her job like the others. Rolly is calm when doing his job. Mofty is a shine but sometimes timid grave. But is still kind like the rest. And then you got Spud. Spud is a troublemaker who loves to cause trouble in Bobsville, but not to the point where it becomes unbearable. However, in some episodes, he sometimes wants to help out. Project Village shows us a fair amount of times. My ready steady build has become much more nicer. That was nice. The voice acting for this series is really damn good. For the UK, at least. Rob Brackstraw is great at voicing multiple characters and has good character range. Same goes with Kane Harbour, Neil Morrissey is just a great voice for characters like Bob, Rolly and Lofty all around. I also quite like the stop motion animation used in the show. This came out at a time where stop motion shows used to be a big thing in the 80s and 90s. And Bob was no exception to that. And as the seasons go on, the stop motion keeps getting better and better in terms of quality and lighting. Particularly when it hits Project Build It. The music is also really well thought and put together, particularly in the first nine seasons. That's not to say that the music for the rest of the seasons are bad or anything. They're still great, but nothing compared to the first nine seasons. Speaking of the latest seasons, I think it's best if I talked about Project Build It. Project Build It is the best era of the original series hands down. I love the concept. The idea of creating an eco-friendly town is a really intriguing idea. And it's great to teach the kids about the environment. Sure, I don't care about climate change, but it at least gives the kids some form of idea of the culture, right? The first nine seasons are quite good though. Though they are perfect. And ready to build? Well... I already stated this in my original review of it, but it's just a mediocre mess. While it has some really good episodes, it isn't without its stinkers. I'm looking at you, Scoop's big job. And while I really like the animation by SD Entertainment, it doesn't even come close to the level of the stop motion by Hot Animation. But unfortunately... Ready Steady Build would lead to the first eventual downfall of the Bolton Builder series. And it would only get worse when Mattel stepped in with the 2015 reboot. It really is sad because the Teletubbies reboot from 2015 at least tried to stay true to its original source material. Whereas with Thomas and Bob with their reboots... They literally don't care about the quality of their shows and pay no respect... To their original source materials in the slightest. With Thomas being taken in a more cartoony and unrealistic direction, and Bob the Builder going the complete opposite of what Thomas used to be. 
How does it feel to have lived long enough to see all of your favorite franchises go down in flames? Feels great. <laughs> It's no secret that Mattel just doesn't even care about the quality of their properties anymore. While their merchandising for stuff like cars and Hot Wheels are fine, the quality of their Thomas merch just keeps getting worse and worse. But regardless of all that, the original Bob the Builder series still holds up to this very day, and it is one of the best TV shows I've ever watched. Glad I got back into the show around 2021. Now, there are other shows I quite like other than those five, like Cars on the Road, Sunset Paradise, and Brom as examples. But all in all, these five shows I've talked about still hold up to this very day. With the Owl House still holding up despite it being cut short to three seasons, and Thomas and Bomb going on a downward spiral with their respective reboots, there's still shows that I respect to this very day and like to come back to and rewatch every now and then and enjoy their theme songs. And that's all from me. See you all soon. Bye everyone. Meet you in